Hi folks, we're going to take a look at the solution to this uh, old style uh, train problem. So let's take a look at what's going on. We have a train that leaves uh, Chicago for Indianapolis, which is 216 kilometers away, at 9 a.m. Then one hour later, so that means at 10 a.m., uh, the tr a train leaves Indianapolis towards Chicago, and we're told that they meet at noon. Then I'm given a second scenario. I'm told, well, if the second train had started at 9, and the first train later, say at 10.30, they would still have met at noon and we want to find the speed of each train. So first thing I notice in this problem here is that we've got two unknowns, the speed of each train, and I'm given two scenarios to work with. So that hints to me that we're probably going to be working with a system of equations with two variables. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on. So we've got here Chicago, and we've got Indianapolis, and we know the distance between them is 216 kilometers. Okay, so we have the train that leaves Chicago and moves along and eventually another train leaves Indianapolis, moves along and they meet at a certain point. Okay. Now since we're dealing with speed, distance and time, let's review the relationships between these. So we know that the speed is equal to the distance divided by time. Here I think we can assume that the uh, speeds are constant. Uh, nothing to indicate that we need to consider varying speeds. And of course this can be rewritten. I can solve for d. So the distance is the speed times time. Or I can even isolate t. Do a little cross multiplication here to get distance over speed. Okay, so these are the relationships that I have access to given the uh, measures that I'm given. Okay, so let's take one train at a time. Let's take train one. What information do we have about train one? Well, we know that it starts at 9, they meet at noon, so we know that it travels for 3 hours. Okay, We're looking for its speed, that's our unknown here, and we're not given the distance that it travels, but we know it makes up a part of this 216 kilometers. Okay, let's take a look at train 2. So, it's going to be traveling for only 2 hours since it leaves at 10 and they meet at noon. Okay, we're looking for the velocity, and again, the distance makes up the other portion of that 216 kilometers. Now, ideally, since my um, variables, of which I'm looking for, are the speeds, I'm going to try to end up with an equation using those two variables. However, the relationship that I have is with the distances. I know that d1 plus d2 has to equal 216. Okay, so I'm going to use these relationships here to turn this equation with respect to distance into an equation with respect to speed if I can. So I do know that the distance is the speed times time, so it's v1 times the time, which is 3. Okay, and then we've got um, d2, which is the speed of the second train times the time uh, that goes by, which is 2 hours has to be equal to 216. So if we clean this up, what we have is 3v1 plus 2v2 equals 216. Okay, And this is quite good because I've got an equation with the two unknowns that I'm trying to determine. So this will be my equation 1. Now I'm given a second scenario. So hopefully this will help me come up with a second equation so I can create a system. So let's take a look at what's happening with train 1 and train 2 in the second scenario. Now, even though the distances and the times aren't going to be the same, I'll still use the same variables. I'll allow myself to use the same variables because the speeds are the same. And I'm hoping to end up with a an equation uh, only involving the speeds. So let's see what happens here. If the second train had started at 9 a.m. and the first at 10.30 a.m., that means that the first train is only traveling for one and a half hours because it starts at 10.30 and uh, they meet at noon. Okay, we're still looking for V1. Okay, and the distance is travels will be used to create an equation. Let's just show that there. Okay, train 2. Well, we're told that train 2 is the one that leaves at 9, so it's traveling for three hours now. Okay, we're looking for the velocity and we're going to use the distance it travels. So similar to before, we know that the two distances have to equal or have to add up to 216. 
So that's what we're going to use to create our second equation. Similar to the first one, d1 plus d2 is equal to 216. Similar to before, we have the distance is the time times the velocity, so 1.5 v1. The distance of the second train will be 3 hours times its velocity, and again equal to 216. And here we have a second equation with the same two unknowns. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this. So I notice here this should be done through elimination, so I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2 so that the coefficients of the v1s will be the same. So equation 1 I won't change, 3v1 plus 2v2 equals 216, but I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 2. Okay, so I have 3v1 plus 6v2 equals 2 times 216 will be 432. Okay, and let's subtract these, and the v1s cancel out, so I'm left now with 2v2 minus 6v2, so negative 4v2 equals 216 minus 432, well that's twice 216, so this is just going to be negative 216, and now I can solve for v2. Okay, let's divide this by 4, so 21 divided by 4 is 5, and then we're left with a 1, so 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we see that the velocity, or the speed of the second train, is 54 kilometers per hour. Okay, so there's half of my answer. And then let's stick this into uh, one of the equations to determine v1. So um, I'm going to avoid the decimals, so let's use that up here. We have 3v1, we'll use equation 1, 3v1 plus 2v2, which now I know is 54 is equal to 216. So I'm going to try to do this without a calculator here. 3v1 is equal to, well, 2 times, oops, sorry, plus 2 times 54 is 108, equals 216. So 3v1 is equal to, well, 216 minus 108, so it's just 108. And let's divide by 3. So what do we have? 10 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, we have one left over, so we're left with 18 divided by 3 is 6, so 36 kilometers per hour. Okay, and there we go, the speeds of the two trains. Well, let's just go back to that original problem here and recognize that we kind of knew right off the bat that we were going to solve a system of equations, the hints being that we were looking for two variables, and we were given two scenarios, meaning a way to create two equations with those variables. And that's it for now.